<laughs> Welcome to Space Vidcast for Friday, October 30th, at 9. I'm Ron Burgundy. Because it's Halloween. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. It's, it's almost Halloween. So wow. I was, and I that clearly took me did way not. Too long. I clearly did not dress as Ron Burgundy. I totally should have. We should have done this like all Anchorman style. Yeah. The the problem is we haven't slept in the last four days. Oh my gosh. So that kind of threw everything off. I have no idea what day it is. We are Benjamin and Carrie and Higginbotham. <laughs> we are your space vidcasters. And why haven't we slept? Uh, Aries. Aries One X has launched. No, I've lost sleep over mast in space. <laughs> well, I have. <laughs> Aries One X successfully launched uh, after just tons of delays. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Well, the, my, worst, the worst part was that oh. there was a four-hour window, and so, so normally so there's a, long. a ten minute window, and maybe there's a couple of them. So you, you're looking at about an hour. This was a four-hour window. We were delayed because of a boat. We could have gone on what was it Monday? We could have gone Tuesday. on Tuesday. We could have gone on Tuesday, but there was a boat in the way. Mm -hmm. The weather. There was an a bl an open area in the weather. We were getting really close. We we're almost ready to start the T minus four o'clock, and there's a boat. And they're like, just set it back ninety minutes. Ninety minutes for a boat. <laughs> it was terrible. It was really terrible. Oh. And then there was the string on top. That was hilarious. Although was... that didn't that didn't stop them. <laughs> the best part about the Aries string, if, for those of you who are watching with us live, it was it was epic because they're like, we've done this two hundred times. We tested a lot because you know once it's up there, we can't whatever. And they're like, so this should go great. And then it just doesn't work. It's like stuck on the top of Aries, <laughs> and you're like. Don't pull it over. It was like the Aries rock. It's like ah, I'm chipping. Uh. It was bad. It was really bad, and it was like a good ten minute ordeal with this stupid string. And they're like, well, they're gonna have to cut it because it's not just gonna snap on its own because it's like parachute string or something. And, and I then, was like, oh god. And there was a new weather condition we had to wait for, and that was uh, tribal kine tribal kinesis. Whoa, tribal kinesis. That is a new one. I haven't heard that one before. Uh, what is tribal electrolysis? <laughs> <There>. Tribal, elec <laughs> tribal <laughs> electrolysis. Oh god, I'm so. Sorry. What, what tribal electronics? Tribal, tribal electrification. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I call it something different every time. Uh, actually, I kept calling it tr uh, tribal, so we started calling it the trouble of tribbles. Yes. So we're late waiting for people to come up with shirts that have tribbles on it with like a little like, electric shot. <laughs> but eventually, on Wednesday, after delay and then another delay and then another delay and another delay, it finally launched. In and like the last half hour of the window. <laughs> in the last part of the window. Here's that video. Eventually. Ignition system is armed. Sound suppression water system is activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and liftoff of Ares 1X. Testing concepts for the future of new rocket design. Altitude now two miles. Pressure now tapering off as designed. The vehicle is lining, aligned itself with the planned trajectory. We passed Mach 1 and we're now passing Max Q. We have our Max Q system ID maneuver PTI engaged. Solid motor chamber pressure picking up again. T plus 62 seconds. Now passing Mach 2, vehicle now 10 miles altitude, downrange distance 8 miles and a velocity of 1,540 miles per hour. Plus 80 seconds, we've started our supersonic large amplitude ID maneuver PTI. We see the response. Started the last PTI maneuver, structural mode ID, and we passed T plus 105 seconds. Vehicle's now traveling Mach 4, 20 miles altitude, downrange distance 32 miles. The uh, SRM tail off is observed. Burnout. 
Our APUs have shut down, CRDs have shut down, medium fire, and SEP. We show a SEP and a tumble motor ignition. Now I realize that's what it was supposed to do, but it still, it just looked wrong. It looks really wrong. Yeah, and, and I, what's weird is because they have the animation showing exactly what that's what was going to happen. Uh, yeah, but I when I saw it live, it I'm like, oh no! Times. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's breaking. What's going on? Yeah. So that, that was, was the scary. news of the past. Are you ready? I think we should start up. Well, that wasn't really news of the past. That was <laughs> what happened in the past. I think it's time to start with some space news of the future. Space news. I We're have, a little punchy. I have no idea what that sound was, but it was awesome. Did they hear that on the stream? Did that I, actually happen? I don't know. I suppose if they didn't hear it, we <laughs> just we look even more stupid. Anyway. So uh, everyone saw the Aries launch. Hopefully you guys joined <laughs> us live. We had some pretty good uh, viewer numbers with that. But what you may not have seen was the solid rocket booster, the, the, yeah, the booster itself, mm -hmm. the recoverable part when they went to recover it. Uh, take a look at this image. It was uh, dented. It was dented. It, like it like was the like, size of a man kind of dense. Someone ran into it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look it at that. It landed on a whale. Apparently what happened is wh there are three parachutes that are supposed to open, and one of them opened but didn't fully inflate <laughs> and then deflated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's what happens when a solid rocket booster hits the water without one of the parachutes. It just kind of goes... <laughs> Dense. Yeah, I know some people were like, you know, three parachutes, what's that going to do? But clearly... Something. <laughs> clearly. Cause Apparently it does something. Yeah. Ow. They're not exactly sure what happened. Uh, you know, the going theory, of course, is that it hit the water and dented that way. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's exactly what it is. Uh, and so they're still looking into it. And then part of the whole test, because this is what this was, a lot of people kept coming into the room saying, where's this going? Is this going to the Mars? Is it going to the moon? Or when's it getting there? No, no, no. This whole thing was just a test. It was supposed to go up 25 miles up and come right back down and go into the water. But part of the test was the parachute system. And uh, they had tried the parachute system with the abort, uh, mm -hmm. with the, just the Orion capsule, and that worked re really well. Uh, we showed that a couple of months ago. Yeah. But they hadn't, uh, they hadn't yet gotten to the booster thing. Because you're not just going to haul a booster up in the air and then throw it down with some parachutes just to test it. You might as well. You could. You could, but you're not going to. So that, you know, hopefully they're learning a lot about what happened, what went wrong, how to fix it, all of that stuff too. But the the, I had a point and I was totally going to touch on it. And I completely <laughs> oh, you know what I was going to say? Actually, it wasn't a point at all. I was going to say uh, for sale on eBay, one NASA solid rocket booster, slightly, slightly used. used. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think they'll be uh, putting that one back into the circulation, will they? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the terrible part is that they, they want to reuse these things. And with that huge dent in it, I just think it'll be, you know, it'll probably be too weak even if they bend it back out and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they'll, so. they'll look up the... Uh, the vehicle ID number. <laughs> they'll put it on SAB fax or SAB, <laughs> SRB, SRB fax. See what the KBB is on that one? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, what's next in our news? I actually don't even have the document open, so I have no idea. Oh, I've got all kinds of fun stuff. I don't have the actual document well, open. Well, what do either. you have next? Um, I have got ESA trying to looking for volunteers. Oh, the 500. Yes. So the, the March 500. We've talked with you guys about this before because I brought it up thinking it was completely hysterical. Why is it hysterical? It's important. It's very important. But well, first off, what, what is the five, Mars 500? Okay, so the Mars 500, if you guys aren't familiar with ESA, it's a little experiment that they're doing. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's really an experiment. No, I call it an experiment. Okay, where they are getting people to volunteer to be in an enclosed space, just like any sort of spaceship that would go to Mars, mm -hmm. to simulate what it would be like to be in that little space for an extended amount of time, i.e. the time it would take to get from Earth to Mars. Yep. Does that make any sense? And they did the first one, which was like 30 days. No, yeah. it wasn't 30 days. It was I like 100 and some odd days. Right, but it was nowhere near the amount of time it takes to get to Mars. This, right. this barn looking thing, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, it looks like a barn, doesn't it? This, I believe, is the Mars 500 facility where they're going to stick people. And the next one they're doing is for 520 20 days. 520 days. And people are asking, what's with the arbitrary 520 days? Well, what's that simulating is, because the first one, the 105 days, was a simulation of just getting from Earth to Mars and landing. Um, I, don't, I don't think it was coming back. Maybe it was coming back as well. No, probably not. Anyway, but the 520 days is getting from Earth to Mars, being there for a while, and then coming back. Mm -hmm. Because the way that the rotation, the, the, 
orbits of Earth and Mars, there are certain times, about every two and a half years or so, when Earth and Mars are much closer together than they are the whole rest of the time, which would be the shortest time to get between the two planets, which right. means those are the times you would want to try to get there or get home. So in the meantime, you got to hang out on Mars. And they're still looking for volunteers for this. But what I'm not clear on, is it really truly volunteer? Do you not get paid? Are you going to be in this place for well over a year and, and not get any money for it whatsoever? I, I called it controlled insanity. Because how, <laughs> how many people on the planet can afford not to work for a year and just be stuck in a closed more space? More than a year. And then, more than a year. And then come back into you know normal civilization. I mean, sure, I'm sure there are some people out there, but... Not, I can't believe there are that many. Yeah, see, Space Kick Cass says, I want to do it. You know, it's, sure. You have to... Finish the bot first. One of the... Oh, sad. One of the things, uh, one of the requirements is that you have to be... Uh, <laughs> about every WoW player. <laughs> oh, you guys are mean. Ouch. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> you have to be uh, a member of Europe. What am I trying to say? A Europe. member of Europe. <laughs> European citizen. Oh, my gosh. Citizen. European citizen. I got the words right. Na -na 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 -na. Anyway, uh... Yeah, so they're they're not just taking any old schmo, especially WoW players from around the world. <laughs> Although I bet they probably could. So once you figured out how to stay on Mars, how do you get to Mars? That's the question. That's right. what the Russians want to know. Exactly. Well, and the Russians have come up with an idea. <laughs> They've nope. decided, very. Uh, what did we decide that was? Doctor Strangelove style. Stra they're going all Doctor Strangelove on us. They're, they're going <laughs> to nuke Mars. No. Okay, well. They're using <laughs> nuclear powered rockets and spaceships to get to Mars. Well, I will say, I'm a big advocate as, of next gen propulsion for space vehicles. Is this next gen propulsion? Well, this is last next gen propulsion. <laughs> I don't understand. It's, it's new gen. It's new. Well, we haven't used it before, although I don't think they're using it to get out of Earth's gravity. I think they're using chemical rockets still to get out of Earth. Right. And then they're using that, by the way, is a picture that I found that had a spaceship in front of Mars. I have no idea what that, it, it doesn't... That, Again, that's, forgive us, we're a little tired. So. That has not, not, nothing necessarily to do with the Mars thing, but I thought it looked cool, so... There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Nuclear, nuclear. All right, you guys are all yelling at me. But anyway, that's what they're using. My understanding is that, yes, they're using the regular powered, regular powered rockets to get out of Earth's atmosphere, and then once a certain amount of way... Uh, then they're going to nuke themselves. Nuke themselves to get even further and go all the I way believe, to Mars. I believe there are a couple different methods to doing this, but I think the Mars. one they're using is where they, they, they pretty much blow up a bomb and then there's a plate and it pushes the plate and they blow up a bomb and it pushes the plate and it keeps pushing you faster and faster and faster in right. space. Well, because again, we just talked about how long it freaking gets, or freaking long it takes to get from Earth to Mars, so you want to kind of do it fastest way possible. So, hey, I mean, if, if that works for them, they're looking for uh, $600 million in order to make this project go. However, the interesting thing is that with Russia, unlike with America, the entire country has been known to suddenly come together and make something like this go as quickly as humanly possible. They're getting ready to build as early as early as 2012. And, and what's interesting, so, um Alice Fan said the original Orion concept, this was the Orion project here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. This is not a new concept for anyone. We've just never done it. Right. And so now it sounds like Russia may try to do it. Of course, other organizations may come in here and be like, oh, no, no, you'll hurt everything. You'll blow up the world. Right. Environmentalists but, are kind of having a little bit of an issue with this one. They but. certainly could make it happen. And if they start building it in 2012, the chances of us, of, of, us, of them beating the Americans to, the, to Mars is... Huge. Astronomically high, Huge. which means uh, they would essentially leapfrog us, in my opinion, in space travel. So, Scary. just so you know, we're about to give up our seed, our leadership in space to Russia. Just so you guys know. And speaking of STS one twenty, I don't know why that's speaking of. This is no, yeah, that was not is, a good segue a at all. Segue, but really but quickly, before we go to break and come back with uh, <laughs> Michael uh, Mealing, Mealing uh, <laughs> talking about Mass in Space Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge attempt today. We have STS-129, which is coming up November... There you go. The thing is, it was originally scheduled for November 12th, and then it got pushed to, like, a ride around... Well, Atlas is reserved range on November 14th and 15th. So then they netted or no, no earlier, earlier than, than 129 for November 16th. However, if Atlas doesn't go till the 15th or so, then we're at a net of November 17th. That was easy. 
Yep. So, and we already had a daily on this. There's lots and lots of uh, scheduling conflicts. Uh, there's meteors going up. There's other stuff that's being thrown up in the air. It's it's really crazy. So, right now, we're hoping for November. Uh, I can't even talk. November 16th. Twitter.com slash Space Vidcast. When that thing's ready to light up, we'll tweet it out and you can watch it live right here on Space Vidcast in high definition. The only place to watch high definition launch coverage. In HD. In high def on the internet. I have to always qualify that with on the internet because you can watch it on CNN. But yeah, yeah. We're cooler. We're pretend. more fun. you got the cool chat room. <laughs> exactly. Other community members and whatnot. When we come back, Michael Mealing, the C-F-O uh, of... <laughs> Of, uh, he's Mass a zero. He's a CXO uh, of Mass in Space will be with us talking about their latest Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge attempt that happened a little bit earlier on today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at crowrivercoffee.com. Thanks.
course, Crow River Coffee Company is what makes Space Vidcast possible. And we every month we have a copy of the month. And that would be this month Sumatra Manhuling. Man Very Hulling? good. I think it's the, you know this is the last time I have to pronounce that and the last show of the month that will have this one. So <laughs> conveniently next month, right as I'm able to, right as I'm able to pronounce this one, we'll move on. But uh, certainly check that out. Uh, help Crow River Coffee out because we took over the entire back half of their coffee shop just to do Space Vidcast for you guys. And uh, buying coffee from them helps them recoup some of those costs. And of course, it's good coffee. It's good for you. And if you don't want a coffee of the month, you can always get some Blast Off Blend. And you can get that by going to CrowRiverCoffee.com, clicking on store, by going to SpaceVidcast.com, and clicking on the little crow thing. And the looks like a Google ad, but you can click right, on it. Right. It's, it's directly under our main video section of the, of the website. You can't miss it, really. So joining us live, we've got Michael Mealing, the CFO of Maston Space, who did their level two attempt of the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge all day today. So that was a pretty long day. So what happened? Um, we had been trying the last couple days to get the, the level two flight off. Um, on Wednesday, we had some issues with uh, one of the onboard um, PC boards that handled the flight control system. Uh, flicking out a little bit on us, and originally thought it was a communications problem with the ground station, but um, after uh, doing some debugging with that throughout the rest of the day, determined that we had to replace the board. Um, we did that, came out today, uh, had a uh, issue with uh, what I think was IPA flow, and I'm getting this second hand because I wasn't actually in Mojave. Uh, I live in Atlanta, so I'm actually doing this from the other side of the country. Um, <laughs> The uh, fix the IPA flow problems through the igniter, uh, and then got set up for the test this afternoon. Um, everything was going well with that test, uh, with that flight. Did the flight perfectly from pad A over to pad B, uh, pad B being the uh, simulated lunar surface with the craters and the boulders and everything. Um, as we landed, we actually had a fire on board the vehicle. Um, I don't know exactly what caused the fire. Um, but uh, we ended up burning through some uh, very critical sensor cables from the engine up into the flight control system. Um, we don't have spares for those cables on board the vehicle, and the rules stipulate that um, spares have to actually be part of the vehicle to be able to use them uh, at pad B. So we weren't able to fly back to pad A. Uh, we did determine that our landing accuracy at Pad B was consistent with our Level 1 flight um, earlier in the month. Um, I think the numbers that I saw were about six inches off of the center line. Um, if we had been able to do um, the Pad B back to Pad A flight, um, we would have had the best uh, landing accuracy so far. Um, where things were left last night, uh, earlier to this, this evening, we were attempting to request um, that the judges give us another flight window uh, tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. uh, as of a few minutes ago, have not heard whether or not that request has been granted or not. So mm -hmm. um, we don't, that, that's all we know, and uh, so we're just waiting to hear back. So to extend the drama, it is, it is possible, although there's no official word yet, that you could fly again on Friday even though this is Friday's Space Vidcast, but uh, you, can fly, you can fly on Friday, and if there are no issues, and if you continue the accuracy that you saw on Zombie uh, for Zoe, I got that right, uh, you, could, uh, um, you could actually still theoretically win NGLLC second... Second level first level, prize. Jeez, wow, why was that so hard for me to say? I have no the idea. second level. Yes. Um, given uh, the, the landing accuracy that Armadillo had on their first flight, uh, that they the first level two flight uh, earlier or late last month, mm -hmm. um, given the accuracy that we had today, if we can repeat that tomorrow, um, then uh, we would uh, take level one first place, um, assuming not including what Paul Breed is going to be able to fly um, tomorrow or Saturday. That's so he, Paul has a level two vehicle, um, and he has also been using some of the G same GPS technology that we've had. So um, if he is able to fly the level two, then it will be a uh, interesting exercise of the rules to see who ends up winning first pre first place on that. So um, 
if <laughs> I had this well formulated question, I think we're all just exhausted. There was it was a big space week for everyone. It's I mean, been crazy this you guys, week. Yeah. You guys, the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge has been going on. We had the Aries. Uh, it was just like lots of test vehicles going on. Yeah. So we're all a little punchy because we've been up for pretty much a week Four days. straight. <laughs> yeah, but it was. I mean, it was. Uh, Awesome if you're a space nerd just to see all the really cool stuff that's been going on, yeah. especially the stuff that uh, that you guys have been doing. Uh, but uh, there's uh, there is a stipulation, I believe, where if the two first place winners are within ten centimeters of each other, you split the prize. Is that correct? You have to be m more at more than ten centimeters apart Different accurate accuracy. So you have to be more than you have to be at least 11 centimeters more accurate than Armadillo in order to win if you are granted that additional flight. Yeah, yes, and that is the average landing accuracy. So you take your A to B, B to A mm -hmm. accuracy numbers and you average them together. Um, so, for example, in the level one flight, um, our first um, accuracy was 19 centimeters and the next one was um, 11 centimeters. So our average was 16 centimeters across this, both flights. Someone would have to come in and beat, uh, beat that, the same average, average accuracy by 10 centimeters to be able to beat us for it. So that means they would have to be better than six centimeters of landing accuracy average over both flights. If they come in, even on the level one second place flight, mm -hmm. If they come in 10 centimeters of our accuracy, they win. You end up splitting the $150,000 um, second place level two, one prize. So we would both get, end up getting 75000 Okay. So, so the same thing applies for the level one as well. What right. would you need okay. to beat Ar on Armadillo's side in order to, what do you need to average out in order to beat Armadillo completely for first place prize? I think their landing accuracy was 53 centimeters. So you'd have to have at least 42 centimeters. Right, and all of our flights have been well within that. Awesome. Now, one thing that was that's kind of worth bringing up is that you had to register prior to now to get your dates for the North Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge. So yes. you would be giving kind of a special extension in order for you to fly tomorrow. Um, without sounding evil or bad, is that fair to Armadillo who did get their dates in advance and did fly on their date and did get the pro I mean they did complete it on the date that they were granted uh, as per the rules. Um, correct. There have been in previous years um, changes to the uh, the available number of flight windows that you've had um, especially when we were at the X Prize Cup. Um, there were weather created delays, there were airport created delays and so there were there were issues that that the judges said well we're going to change the rules and allow that to happen so we're the way we look at it is um, this is in that same vein we're asking the question and the judges are are going to make a decision one way or the other and we're going to live with that decision well an armadillo is not not any stranger to that sort of thing when we did the when we covered the well what used to be called the x prize cup but was the north of grumman lunar lander challenge in 2008 there was a it wasn't a uh, an issue with the vehicle itself but there was kind of a similar issue where the judges did have to sort of deliberate and decide to let armadillo go ahead and continue their window after something that had happened there was some something weird with the faa and something 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 i can't yeah, remember exactly but what I, the details i think the difference were, is those are external factors because uh, the weather is an external factor that's non-controllable by any group. The right. FAA was an external factor that's not controllable by any group, whereas this was a vehicle failure. I mean, fundamentally, this was a vehicle failure. This was well, not a, right. an external factor. Yeah, but the judges are not, because they're not partial to any particular team in any way, shape, or form, then I, I think that whatever their decision is, they'll give a good reason for it. And Oh, absolutely. I'm you just know. curious as to if I were Armadillo, I'm just putting myself in Armadillo's shoes. Right. I mean, if I were Armadillo, I'd be like, hey, I want another chance too. Uh, Rick Hanton or Hantner in the chat room is asking if weather was a factor on Tuesday, but you guys didn't fly on Tuesday, is that correct? Well, I mean, you no, didn't, didn't fly officially fly on Tuesday. Yeah, that's a good question. Right, we, Did we, flew weather a we, we flew a tether flight on Tuesday okay. to do a, a full depletion test, but the, our, our flight competition windows were Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> well, the drum, um, the drum is heating up. Uh, you know, we are huge, we're huge fans of all the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge teams. That is a mouthful. Seriously, they need to con condense that a little bit. Um, in GLC. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Touche! <laughs> and, and, and that is something about this competition. Um, 
starting back when the idea was even first uh, put out there, um, um, the Pauls uh, and uh, Armadillo and everybody on the Armadillo team and our team, um, we all know each other. We all commiserate. We all go to the Space Access Conference every year and, and bring hardware and talk to each other and exchange uh, lessons that we've learned. Um, we all kind of feel that um, the the more the industry succeeds, the better off we all are. Mm -hmm. um, if for simple preservation, that if any one of us don't um, actually make it, we can go get a job with the other guy. <laughs> there you go, exactly. You know, the chat room is asking, and actually this is a good question, where it sounds like they're thinking high winds were a factor in the... Um, on Wednesday. On Tuesday or Wednesday, they're Wednesday. not sure. Oh, I see Tuesday right um, here and then Wednesday right here. Yeah, no, he meant Wednesday. Okay. So were, the, were winds in the way on Wednesday, or was that... Just Winds, M Mojave is weird because um, if you remember from the um, um, the first X Prize flight with Spaceship One, mm -hmm. um, they like to fly very early in the morning. There's a reason we get up and have our flight briefing at 6:30. The winds kick up during the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, the winds on on Wednesday in the afternoon were starting to get a little high. We can fly at about a 30 um, knot wind. Um, we don't like to. Uh, so there, that that may have been some of it. Like I said, I'm a little bit out of the loop because the guys out in Mojave are really, really focused on what's in front of them, and, and communicating back to me is a low priority. <laughs> Sad. Well, I have a feeling they communicate back to you more than we, more than they did us or uh, <laughs> uh, anyone else. Well, uh, you know, we are, like I said, we are we're rooting for you. We're also rooting for Armadillo, as you know, as are all the other teams. We're also rooting for Unreasonable and everyone else. And uh, it's it's really cool to see the privatized space companies. I'm I'm actually kind of rooting against everyone because I I want the NGLC to go on next year too. Well, it will it um, most likely will because of the second place prize. Well, and that and there's also um, discussions on what a follow-on prize would end up looking like. Oh, that would um, be cool. So, so beyond this, because this was um, really about lunar orbit down to the uh, to the surface and back up. But along the same vein of suborbital flights and things like that, um, there are some discussions about um, altitude prizes, uh, turnaround time prizes, things like that. So, I don't. It, given the success of the the challenge this year, um, I think that we're going to see more challenges in the future. Oh, absolutely. Where do you guys go from here? Um, we're going up to doing high altitude flights starting in 2010. Uh, if you notice that Armadillo is starting to do boosted hops, we're going to start doing the same thing. Um, we're talking to customers about putting payloads on those uh, vehicles for um, big aerospace and little aerospace, educational payloads, things like that. Um, the, the goal is to our first uh, attempt at a space flight sometime toward the end of 2011. That's going to be really but if you want to fly on us, uh, starting sometime next year, we're going to be taking payloads. Go to our website, mastin-space.com, and sign up, and we'll hook you up. And where else can they follow you? I, you guys have some Twitter accounts, don't you? <laughs> everybody in the company has a Twitter account. I think everybody in the company has their own blog. Um, so it's a little, we're a little challenging. Um, we have twitter.com slash mastinspace, all one word. Um, that's where I tweet for the company. But if you follow uh, D Mastin as well and Wicket, uh, ben Brockert, um, you get a lot of things out of them. Um, but uh, the, the Mast in Space Twitter account is probably the easiest because we uh, retweet a lot on that one. Um, that was how we were mostly keeping up with what was going on out in Mojave today. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for the update. Uh, good luck to you guys. We'll see what happens uh, with what the judges say in uh, letting you compete again tomorrow. And good we'll, luck. Be, we'll be watching that very closely. And really quickly, thank you. Thank you, and of course to XPRIZE as well, for um, getting all that stuff out on live video, the yeah. feed out. Um, I know that there was at least 600 people watching uh, on the official Ustream channel. I think a couple other people embedded it. I think we were showing it for a while, so we had a whole other group of people watching it. So I uh, really, really appreciate Even though we are not able to be there on site, I really appreciate all of your effort to get some video of, you know, live video streaming of what's going on out there. That's just awesome. And I really actually would like to thank you guys for uh, doing a little bit of yeoman's duty before that to see if we could get that done. That was really set up within about 12 hours before the flight. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Um, the the, the XPRIZE guys showed up, had no idea what was going to be there, and actually got it working within about two to three hours. So um, uh, thanks a lot for you guys for, for being there for the fallback uh, solution. So, um, But I'm going to go to bed now. Um, <laughs> yes. I've so had it. 
<laughs> I've had a hell of a day. I've had a hell of a day, and, and tomorrow may even be worse. So. Well, good luck. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great night. Thank like you, thank Michael. Thanks, everyone, for joining us live. We have live shows every Thursday night. Now, remember, this is the last live show in central daylight time, at least for us, or in daylight savings time. Mm -hmm. If you set your clocks back an hour, November 1st, the show time will change for you next week, the live show. The show will be one hour prior to what it is right now, and that's because we do not honor daylight savings time. We are always, always, always at 2 a.m. coordinated universal time, and there's no daylight savings time that applies to GMT or UTC. Right. So. At this week, it was at 10 p.m. Eastern. Next week, it'll be 9 p.m. Eastern. Remember that? We will tweet it out to try to remind you guys. But last time, you all yelled at me because I didn't give you enough notice. I've given you notice now for the entire month. It is your fault if you missed the show. I take no credit for that. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, you know, it, it's just... Tell them not to do daylight savings time. Now, here's where it gets really confusing. Not everyone honors daylight savings time, even mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So if you don't honor daylight savings time, if you never change your clocks, the show time for you will not change. It will be exactly when it was uh, this last week. So join us next week. Follow our Twitter account at twitter.com slash spacevidcast. We're also adding a timer bar to the Space Vidcast site so you can see when the sh next show will be on and do time zone conversion for you. Thank you to Steve Green for making all of that happen. You'll see that co-op live this weekend. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us live, and we'll see you next week.